Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you will learn how to generate wind loads according to the ASCE 7's main wind force resisting system. In this particular video, we will be focusing on creating our wind load definitions for the walls of our enclosed building structure for wind acting on the structure in the positive global Z axis direction with positive internal pressure. This process will include creating our wind definitions for the windward, leeward, and side walls of this structure, and then applying these loads to the areas in a following step. Now before we create our wind load definitions for the walls of our enclosed building structure, let's first take a look at the calculations that RAM elements will perform to arrive at the design wind pressures. RAM elements will calculate your design wind pressure according to the ASC 716 equation 27.3-1. Through this process, it will consider the velocity pressure, the gust factor, the external pressure coefficient, and the internal pressure coefficient. We do recommend that you have your ASC 716 available as a reference when creating your wind definition to ensure that all of your variables are entered correctly. So the first step in our workflow for generating wind loads and then applying them to our structure is to create your wind load definition. The wind load definition contains all of the code parameters that will be used to calculate the design wind pressures and to start this process we will select the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Wind Definition icon. Now for this video, we're going to be focusing on wind acting on the exterior walls in the positive Z direction with positive internal pressure. That being said, we'll start by entering all of our general parameters, including your basic wind speed, our gust factor, and enclosure classification. We will then move on to our building geometry information. And our topographic factor. Since we're working on an enclosed building structure, we're gonna enter our pressure types. And we're gonna start with our windward wall. And then we will enter our interior point coordinates. Now for the interior point coordinates, you want to select an X, Y, and Z value that represents the interior of your structure. What this interior point coordinate will do for you is that when you go ahead and apply your wind pressures to the structure, the program will understand where the interior of the structure is and your load arrow should be pointing in the correct direction considering that information. Lastly, we're going to enter our internal pressure, which we can enter as either positive or negative. And the wind load case that we're working on right now is for positive internal pressure. Now that we've entered all of our variables for our windward wall with wind acting on the structure in the Z direction, we will enter the new button and name our wind definition. And I'm going to just name mine windward Z. We'll click OK. Now, while we are still within this dialog, we can enter our or create our leeward and sidewall definitions as well. So here I'm going to change my pressure type to leeward. I'm going to verify all the other parameters and then click on the new button. Call this one leeward Z. And finally, let's focus on our sidewalls. Now at this point, since we are working on primarily our exterior walls of our structure, I'm going to close out of the wind definition dialog. And at this point, I am ready to assign my wind pressure to my exterior walls. 
When you are ready to apply your wind definitions to your load areas for a particular load case, you're going to start by selecting that load case in the conditions pull down menu that's available at the bottom of your screen. Now for convenience in this data set file, we already set up all of the eventual load cases that we will be using or analyzing our structure for. Here I'm going to select my first wind load case that represents wind load in the positive Z direction with positive internal pressure. Once you've correctly identified your load case, you're ready to start applying the wind loads. And we're going to do that process with one wall at a time. And I'm going to start by selecting my windward wall if wind were acting on the structure in the positive Z direction. So in your main view window, you can go ahead and unselect everything and select one of the wall areas at the back of the structure. If I were to take a look at the uh, global axis tripod in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, I would see that this would represent the windward wall if wind were traveling in the positive Z global axis direction. Now for convenience, we did go ahead and assign descriptions to each of the walls within our structure to make selection easier. So with one of those load areas selected, I can select the by description icon to then select the rest. For more information on the load areas, I can review this information in the areas tab in the data panel. Now at this point, I'm ready to assign my wind pressure. So with the areas tab selected, you can then select the surface load icon. With this icon selected, all of your active spreadsheet tools for pressures will be available, including the assign wind pressure icon. Through the assign wind pressure icon, you can select a load definition to assign to the load area, which will then be applicable to the current active load case. Here, I'm going to select the windward Z wind definition. Now within this dialog, I'll be able to see all of the input information that I specified within this definition. If I wanted more information, I can click on the preview report and I'd be able to see all the variables and design wind pressure that will be assigned to each of the currently selected load areas. So once you have finished your process of selecting your definition, go ahead and click OK. We will be able to see the pressure that is assigned to each load area within the data panel. And if we wanted to see that load area distributed to the supporting members, we can ask the program to distribute the load areas. Now, this process will automatically take place when a analysis is performed, but this will give you some additional information to see the direction that the load areas are spanning, and then of course the load areas to ensure that your loads or pressures are acting in the right direction. Now that we've addressed our windward wall, let's go ahead and take a look at the other three walls of our structure, starting with our leeward walls. So I'm going to select my load areas, select the rest with a by description icon, and then assign the relevant wind definition. And here I'm going to select the leeward Z. Now that I'm ready to assign the pressures to the sidewalls, I can see I have two different sidewalls, but I have one sidewall definition that I'm going to utilize. To ensure that your pressures are assigned pointing in the correct directions, we're going to select each sidewall at a time. The reason we do that is that load calculations happen when the load definition is assigned to the load area. And we want to make sure that that internal point coordinate is considered correctly. So we're going to do one plane at a time. I'm going to start with one side of the structure, assign its pressure, click OK, and then I will go to the other side of the structure. Again, if I wanted to see my load arrows, I can go ahead and click Distribute Load Areas to Supporting Members. And here I'll be able to see my 
windward wall, my leeward wall, and then my two side walls that are pointing towards the exterior of the structure. Now as we finish this up, let's go ahead and take a look at our load definition area within the areas tab in the data panel. In this area, we'll be able to see which wind definition is assigned to which area within the model. It's important to note that each load area can only have one wind definition assigned per load case. It's also important to understand that if anything within your wind definition changes after it is assigned to a load area, say for example your basic wind speed changes, you should go back and reassign that load definition to the load area to ensure that the calculations are updated and included in your final design. At this process, this concludes our demonstration of applying wind definitions to the exterior walls of the structure for wind load acting in the positive Z direction with positive internal pressure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.